Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation, man. There's a lot of um, narrative shifting and narrative switching that these Bitcoin maxis and other uh, people out there are trying to make out of this whole uh, ripple victory, this massive, you know, precedent setting ripple victory against uh, the SEC and Chairman Gensel when it comes to XRP being declared not a security, man. There's a lot of stuff that I'm going to cover, but I wanted to uh, touch on a few things that's going to lead us into uh, Crypto's Eddie's uh, interview here with Alexandra Damsker. Because uh, Alexander Damsker uh, reminds me of this gentleman that was on Tony Edwards Thinking Crypto um, spaces that he had when he was co-hosting with um, XRP Darren. And this gentleman was coming on talking about, you know, the possibility of an appeal and how it's likely or, you know, more likely that uh, it would uh, the the judgment from Judge Torres will be uh, overturned, if you will. So this whole narrative has been shifting and they're trying to like suppress like how monumentous this this uh, precedent that's been set with the victory and XRP being declared not a security like they want XRP to be a security so bad. So we're going to cover that stuff in, in this video here. But I wanted to shout out DAI, man. This is one of my favorite uh, YouTube crypto YouTubers right here, man. And uh, he says digital asset investor dot XRP. He got the dot XRP on the end there. And I think that's like a jab. It's a little bit of um, I guess you could say uh, proudness, obviously, you know, hard fought valiant effort. Uh, with a victory, but it's also a jab at the dot ETH people out there that he used to call out all the time. And then he goes, uh, the only digital asset with legal regulatory clarity, XRP. And it says, losing on appeal would risk the SEC's entire enforcement agenda. So this is going to tie into kind of what we're talking about here, right? So uh, coming over here, I was going to play this segment, but I'm just going to talk about what it is. So they're, they're referencing uh, Tone Vase here. And a lot of people have been talking about this in the community. So this is from DAI. It says, Bitcoin Maxi's gone wild. Tone says, thinks Ripple could go uh, go out of business, business now that they won the lawsuit because since he's a Bitcoin Maxi, they actually lost. Guy at the end says, there's a scenario where the money, meaning XRP, goes to the treasury. It's painful how blind this guy is. So they're pretty much talking about, you know, uh, the the fees in, you know, based on the violation that the judge kind of split the baby and said, Oh, you will, this was a violation, you know, you selling, uh, I think it was to the, um, institutions, if you will. Uh, and on the other end, you know, we got the regulatory clarity for XRP, but they're saying, yeah, Oh, you got to pay, you know, 700 million or something. And another gentleman was talking about what well, I think it's equivalent of like two point something billion or something crazy, but they're, they're, you know, they're out there spreading this stuff. Right. And people are calling them out on it. You know, Tony Edwards is saying, ladies and gentlemen, the toxic BTC maxi right here says ripple after its victory over the SC is going out of business and XRP is still a security. So just to touch on that, I'm quickly going to jump over to, uh, where's it at right here. This is a great tweet right here, and this is from Chad. It says, remember this. Guess what they all uh, they were all waiting for? The wait is over XRP. So then you have all the connections between like Vanguard and uh, JP Morgan Chase, S SBI, R3, Bank of America, all pointing to Ripple, right? The wait is over, and that's when uh, you know we have a bunch of you know people saying over the target. You know, you're right over the target. Great, great uh, tweet. Uh, this is the truth, facts. Uh, you know the 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 train has has left the station. So how could it possibly how could they possibly be going out of business? They're just getting started. They just got the green light, right? And then uh, Matt Helmonton is talking about uh, Tone Vase here. Uh, says I joined a space uh, he was on the other day. It's remarkable how so many years later he still doesn't understand some of the very basics of uh, of XRP. Man, it's crazy. And then tie it into more just, you know, trolling and misinformation and shifting the narrative, you know, kind of causing this confusion, if you will, to, you know, the, I guess you could say the people that aren't as involved or the newcomers to the space. You have Charles Gasparino still going on his thing, right? And uh, he says, so does Ripple have one billion in cash laying around or one billion in XRP that they will cash in to pay the fine? which also dilutes retail. Another question I have for management, because he's referring to, uh, responding to Moon Lambo's tweet 12 hours ago, it says, Garland House previously stated Ripple has $1 billion in the bank, so maybe it come from that. I personally care 0%, which, me, me too. We got, as XRP investors, retail, we got what we wanted. XRP being declared not a security, right? Boom, we're solid. Whatever fines and fees they got to pay, we've already talked about it from... You know, when D, um, JD and uh, and Jeremy Hogan and them were talking about what could potentially happen within litigation, right? They could be fined for the early days of this thing, right? So what? What does that mean to us? You know, Brad Garnhouse came out publicly in an interview, says we have, 
I think it's well over a billion or a billion in cash ready to go. And they, they, they were even talking about it. He was talking about in the light of they have it, you know, to, you know, further grow organic growth or, you know, grow by acquisition and, and dive it into other verticals, if you will, it's not just crawl cross border or uh, liquidity, but actually getting into other other uh, verticals to further uh, expand and scale. I mean, who knows how much they actually have, right? But I mean, this is all merely interesting, right? Why are you, why is this the focus? Why why aren't we celebrating and focusing on the actual growth in the space? Why are we talking about this minuscule, in a sense, relatively speaking, minuscule fine that they have to pay, right? But, you know, it's just a waiting game to kind of see how that plays out. And then this one just blew my mind. Charles Gasparino says, hmm, Ripple keeps reminding me XRP and Ripple are not connected in any way. I guess the ship has definitely sailed sad ha huh? and this is from a, a scam account this is ripple isle xrp this is is an actual ripple and i think the actual ripple account has the the gold uh check mark but this says join our community celebrating our coinbase partnership and i literally go he's got to be trolling us on this one and then tony edwards says are you senile or something that's a scam account you dummy Get off Twitter, man. You're an embarrassment. Alex Kopp, Fox News journalist, draws 300,000 views to a scam Ripple post and tells people it's real. Uh, coming down here, there's some more. Uh, King Solomon, you literally just quote tweeted a scam post. X, uh, XRP production. This is perhaps the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Even you got Joey. Uh, Joey. Oh, I hear Matt Hamilton says, you okay? Good Morning Crypto says, this is a fake account. And then you have even Joey Swole here. Says, brother... Aren't you a journalist that literally part of your job is to know when a source is real or fake? Anyways, my new favorite thing on Twitter is watching you get absolutely ratioed. Do better. <laughs> it's crazy. But I, the reason why I'm showing this stuff is because it's going to tie into where we're getting into this video. So I think I'm going to have about maybe like 10 minutes worth of content in Crypto Eddie stuff that I want to cover because... It's it's evident that the Bitcoin maxis are out there, or as uh, DAI says, uh, what does he say? Maxis gone wild. They're trying to shift the narrative, and they're trying to do what they've always done. BC Backer says it right here. The class of 2021 and 2023 hasn't known about the XRP flood from the Bitcoiners prior to the lawsuit. This is all normal stuff. Appeal will overturn. Crap coin, bankers coin. They just thought they could write XRP off or forget about it because of the SC lawsuit. Now it's panic. Literally hits it right on the head. I've been here since uh, late 2017, and this is literally just a repeated cycle. And that's why he's saying this is a class of 2021, 2023 that hasn't been exposed to this. But it's like, dude, this is what they do. I mean, and th this goes back to this. The wait is over. The, the train has left the station. I mean, we've already set sail. The rocket ships have already, you know, taken off. It's just a matter of when we really get to our destinations. And I'm saying destinations because it's not just one stop. There's, this thing is going to scale. It's going to grow. It, it's crazy. But we're going to get into uh, this this interview. And shout out Crypto Eddie, man. I love Crypto Eddie's channel uh, and her content. She has this interview with Alexandra Damsker. And there are just some things that I want to cover that I think is are, is quite interesting. Because it, it reminds me of that gentleman from that Twitter spaces that Tony Edwards uh, had. And he was kind of coming out talking about all these different things. And even BC Backer, I think, called him out talking about, like, hey, are you, you know, pretty much like, hey, are you a Bitcoin maxi? Like, you know, what, what's your agenda here? Like, what are you what are you doing here? And this kind of reminds me of it as well. So we're going to play a couple of different clips. I have like six different clips. So let's start with this one. Prima facie case or, or affirmative defense. So you must rule for me because no reasonable jury would would rule for that side. And so what the judge did is said is granted each one in part um, and denied in part. The, the second thing, it, uh, so it's not over. The second thing it means is uh, XRP is a security. Remember. So, so what she's saying here, from my understanding, is she was talking about how the judge split the baby. Here's 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 what you know the SEC went on in a sense, and here's what um, you know uh, Ripple won in a sense in regards of. Uh, uh, declaring XRP not a security when it comes to the pragmatic sales or whatever, all that stuff. And then you have the uh, the violation, right, uh, of the sales in the earlier days. And then the fact that she says this isn't over. So there they go starting that narrative of like this can appeal and it's going to it's going to make more sense once we get further into these these clips of how she's building this narrative. Right. And Crypto Eddie's, you know, being very respectful and being very professional about it. But we're going to dive more into it. So the next one I have is at the five minute mark. And this one's. um Talking about like what's what's most likely to happen, right? Let's listen. So to that. is what the XRP holders are so, you know, focused on 
that that is not up for any change, right? Oh no, this all of it is. That's part of the summary judgment, right? And that is actually <laughs> very likely uh that's one of the areas that's most likely to be overturned to be honest. What the judge is saying is that the one of the like so they're talking about the the, the status of XRP be, be, being a security most likely to be overturned. That's literally what what was stated. Let's continue on. Uh, people who purchased those tokens mm -hmm. uh, did not have any contact right. with the, with they the didn't thing. know that Ripple was selling them as to as opposed to someone else. Right. So how could they know that it was a security? But that's not, that's not the test. That's the problem. That's not the test. That's like saying I bought shares. Uh, so Apple could sell, Apple has a shelf registration, right? So Apple can sell a bunch of shares directly and also some selling share, shareholder shares, right? So they're mixed together on the on the stock exchange. Now I buy a share. I don't know if my share oh, is from thing. Apple or if it's from a selling shareholder or some other third party, right? Right. I did not talk to Apple. Uh, I didn't talk to anybody. All I can talk to is all I can do is look at the information that's available, right? Mm -hmm. And I make my decision to purchase these things. That doesn't make it less of a security. The fact that I didn't speak to the founding team does not mean that it's not a security. So this this is a long-standing thing. They actually this is a, a an issue of law. And this is something that, um, unfortunately, uh, is very likely to be overturned simply because um, that's absolutely not how it works, right? The, there's another presumption on here that I find, frankly, incredibly insulting, which is basically like uh, that, that the retail investors who purchased uh, could not possibly have known what all of the information released by Garlinghouse, Larson, Ripple, they couldn't possibly have known what any of that meant. So it's impossible for them to have used any of that information and uh, as a security, which is uh, and invested as a security, which is what the institutional investors relied on. They relied on these brochures. So long story short, as she's going on in her spiel, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you straight up, when I invested, I had no clue. I, I really didn't know the connection, if you will, to Ripple and what, what it was. I thought they was just like, that was it. You know what I'm saying? You look at the the top, I think it was Coin Market Cap was the one that I was looking at before, Coin Gecko or Coin Paprika or whatever, Coin Market Cap. So you look at the top ones and quite honestly, you know, uh, it, uh, not knowing I, ignorantly or whatever like i was thinking oh man look at look at this look at this token and look at how much bitcoin's worth you know what happens when this gets to bitcoin's price let me go ahead and buy this this is a lot cheaper you know that's kind of literally how it was and i'm sure 90 nine percent of the the uh, initial or the newcomers coming to the space think the same way that don't have information so for her to go on this spiel that she's going on is really interesting she's almost speaking for all investors as if like oh all this information is out there so you should know it that's not that's not what it's about you're talking about whether xrp the digital asset is a security in itself and is a security it's it's about the how we test so what what do you mean you have to fulfill the four prongs and to reiterate the four prongs i have it right here on google the Howey test consists of four elements, often referred to the, as prongs. According to the test, a transaction is security if it is, one, an investment of money, two, in a common enterprise, three, with the expect, expectation of profit, or four, to be derived from the efforts of others. And from my understanding, based on the litigation we went through from all the legal minds as part of the community, you have to fulfill all four prongs of the Howey test to be classified as a security so all this is merely interesting and literally what i just said crypto eddie talked about i think it was like 50 seconds later she was talking about people look at the market cap that's how they invest it was merely interesting what ripple did what the company was who was leading the company who was de it didn't matter they were looking at market cap that's what it was so that's really interesting so going on to the next one is at uh 13 30 and she was uh she's uh alexandra is talking about um uh, yeah, referring to some judge, some judge stuff. So let's listen into this. That's a speculative yeah. investment. But that's, that's that was in one of the amikis that was presented by John Deaton as as a use case. But that is not so. This court, okay, uh, just a quick second on yeah. amicus briefs. Yeah. Okay. 
An amicus brief is a friend of the court, right? Where yeah. basically you could have on either side, you could have um, a, a, um, a an attorney or a foundation or something who basically operates as an additional lawyer for like buff, buffeting up the case of uh, one side or the other. Now, um, the Supreme Court puts great reliance on these, but the lower down you go in the courts, the less they, they rely on these things, right? Um, you can have courts that even bring um, the Amici into the case, right? So this is Amicus, it's called Amicus Curiae, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that is, um, so if you, anybody wants to look that up, and um, and there were some very interesting ones. There is no record that I see officially of those being considered as for this particular action. That's not what's in the decision, right? We have to look only at what's in the decision mm -hmm. and we're not looking at, I, I can't tell what's in, you know, what's in her head, what's mm -hmm. in the judge's head. I can't tell, you know, anything else, like other than what she wrote here, I'm not her clerk. I can't tell what she considered, but from what's in here, I don't have any other information. And what's in here, she did not consider the possibility that people buying from the exchanges were using the token as a token not as a speculative investment that would have been a so here's the thing that i'm okay so this is just i'm just some cat on the internet literally enjoying making this content so i'm just speaking from my perspective on um, how i view things throughout this whole entire almost what two and a half year plus uh, process right listening to jd mainly so um the fact that she's saying what she's saying you know she says she's not in, you know in the judge's head and she's not the judge's clerk and all these different things but it's like what crypto eddie and as crypto eddie kind of has like her head turned to the side kind of like confused like hmm, i think these things were brought up and i think this was um you know, the reason why she came down to her conclusion, Judge Torres seemed to be just like J.D. says, we were very blessed to have her, have her. She seemed to be one of those judges that did her full due diligence to the best of her abilities per the timeline she has and the information that she has. So based on us being, you know, uh, amicus and being with J.D. and him, you know, sharing testimonies and all these different things. I don't know all the verbiage, all the legal stuff, but all these things were considered. I don't know. uh in particular, just thinking about it right now, all the exact verbiage that came down to from her judgment. But I think if JD came on here, he would be able to literally slap her, uh, her in a sense, her facts or her position or opinion just straight down to the ground with the real facts of what's happening. Because it makes no sense why she would say that. How could the judge get to where she got to? You know what I'm saying? Even her saying it in her own sense, I'm not in the judge's head. I'm not her clerk. Well, maybe those things were actually part of it. Which I'm sure they are. I'm, I'm curious to see if uh, JD responds to to that segment. Uh, but we're going to continue on here and move on to this next clip right here. I think you can come on. But the other one, examples. very good. Yeah. But I think there's many examples of where XRP was being used as a as a tip token, you know, we, where you would tip people. Uh, and then, I mean, it just wasn't always purchased for the hope that it was going to go up in price and you would be able to exit out in a in a position yeah, of I, profit i i just don't think that was that's always been the case and 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 i guess also too um i just am confused because i thought it was all about how the how the token was sold makes it an investment contract but the actual token itself can't be like the like in Howie, the oranges aren't tokens. That's, yeah, that's a lot of what I hear from people who are huge fans of. Uh, that's a very yeah, but that's I mean, a very uh, hearing, pro pro XRP argument but, that but we've been around. But we've been hearing you could turn anything into a security based on the way it's sold, right? But the actual Not, item it's, itself is can't be it can't stand alone as being a security right it's the no, no. so what's what's wild is just how she kind of just like and i felt kind of belittled like oh that's she pretty much like oh that's the weak ass argument that i hear from you know um uh, you know the pro xrp people and that's their agenda type thing but it's like that's well, we've been here from the legal minds and it seems like the legal minds we have in our communities, you know, in case in point, Jerry Hogan, Fred Spoli, JD, like they've been right, especially JD, like in Jeremy Hogan, they've been right in, in what they've been in a sense saying and, and teaches and educating us in the community. So it's like, 
what she's saying is it just goes back to that dude. This is weird. Like, it goes back to what blockchain backer was saying. They're, they're in sheer panic. And, you know, and I'm going to touch on, you know, Alexandra and kind of my thoughts on what, what this is all about. Um, uh, we're going to play this clip really quick right here. Um, that uh, token holders. Thank you. Token holders love to go after. Um, well, I don't think it's a security. Is it a security? This to me is a non-starter because it's entirely in the playground of the SEC. Who determines if something's a security? The SEC, they are, they are the arbiter of whether or not something is a security. Here is So just with that, based on all the stuff we've been uncovering in the community and making videos about and sharing content, the timeline, hashtag ETHGATE, and just all the connections to China, uh, China CCP, and uh, just all the shady stuff, right? And then more in particular, our current chairman, our previous chairman, and other representatives within the SEC, the so-called SEC that's supposed to be setting, uh, you know, uh, a precedent in regards of, you know, investor protection and doing what's best for the investors and, you know, uh, capital formation and all this stuff, protecting markets. And she just said the SEC is the determinant of what is and what is in a security, but we're supposed to just... Um, you know, in a sense, roll over and allow them to overregulate by enforcement. You know what I'm saying? They haven't even been getting it right. It's clear there's corruption and conflicts of interest within the SEC, right? So this is bigger than than what she's saying. Regardless of, oh, this is what the SEC, they are the ones said what is and what is security. It's like, well, look at look at how they are. Look at their reactions. Look at their involvement. Look at the conflicts of interest and the corruption. It, it's nuts. And I wanted to touch on this last one because Crypto Eddie brought up the whole Prometheum thing. Listen into this one. Right. And all the rules are like spokes that come off of it. But broker dealers haven't been the center of securities transactions since the end of Blast Steagall around 96. That fell. Right. So most of these rules are almost impossible to like, we have to add in pieces in order to make these rules work, we have to add in additional people and additional steps to make these rules work. Like you have to add in elements that introduce fraud. That doesn't make sense to me, right? So we have a system that can be automated. And at this point, with an automated system, you have reduces in order to make these rules work. Um, I think my clip just, maybe I picked the wrong one. Yeah, I put the wrong one. Okay, so long story short, what I wanted to show in that clip, that was my last one uh, that I wanted to show. But this one, uh, talking about the whole broker-dealer partner thing, uh, Crypto Eddie had brought up that, oh, is that why, you know, the, the SEC had uh, awarded uh, Prometheum and, and uh, Aaron Kaplan the uh, broker-dealer license and all stuff? You're pretty much, talk, uh, you know, referencing like, hey, you know, they – the SEC had to kind of throw out some sort of like, oh, hey, you know, we're trying to create some sort of path to compliance or all these different things. Right. But it, the cold part is it just goes back to what we were saying. She was saying that the SEC is the one that determines what is and what is a security. Right. Why in the hell would we, uh, you know, just roll over and allow them to overregulate by enforcement, even though we've expose all their blatant corruption and uh conflicts of interest and all that stuff right and it's clear look at what they did with prometheum out of everyone else that's been involved in the space all the people that could could have uh you know gotten that uh you know special classification broker you know a dealer's license right they just randomly give it to prometheum who no one knew about all even all the major people within the space that's been in this industry for years didn't even know who the heck Aaron Kaplan and Prometheum was. It just goes to fit their narrative. They they pull out all stops, do everything they possibly have to do to get an edge and to uh, um, get their way, right? It, it's crazy, man. Um, long story short, there's a whole bunch of other uh, great information that could have been pulled from this, but that's kind of what stood out to me. But it just goes back to what BC Backer uh, was talking about, man. Like, this is normal stuff. Appeal will overturn crap coin, bankers coin. This is all the same stuff that they've been doing for years. DAI is talking about it. This is Bitcoin Maxi's going wild. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because if we come down here, uh, even BC Backer goes here. He goes, Hey, Eddie, thanks for doing this. If you if if you recall, we had a Twitter space a few days ago, and in there, a securities lawyer jumped in. He had the same type of view as her. 
but what was interesting is that he has Bitcoiner in the title of Twitter profile. I just I just checked the Twitter profile for Alexandra Damsker, and she as well has a giant Bitcoin logo on her header. Seems to be a consistent view from people who are all in Bitcoin. So let me see what some of these comments are real quick. If it loads. But this is this is what I'm talking about, man. Like they, they're going to they're going to try to do what they got to do to fit their narrative. And it is panic mode. And I'm not saying that she's some, uh, you know, that this Alexandra is some dirtbag or anything. I'm not saying that. Go figure that they, uh, they're they're at it again. And Crypto Eddie's is this Crypto Eddie? No, that's not her, is it? Did you know just 50 uh -oh. years ago what the average life? OK, long story short. Uh, yeah, like it just goes back to to that that whole narrative and they, they're trying to spin the narrative and, and, and twist it in and form it in ways that benefit them man they're all in panic mode we're currently sitting at a 1.25 trillion market bitcoin sitting at 30,301 ethereum sitting at 1930 xrp sitting at almost uh just a little over 75 and a half cents which is huge uh bitcoin fair green index sitting at a 54 in a neutral right now Man, that's what I have for you. It's, it's crazy, man. Bitcoin Max is going wild, right? They're going to try to spin things in their favor. Make sure you come to the Crypto's Key Conversation YouTube channel. Subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Crypto's Key 1. I really appreciate your support out there. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.